credited with the first observation. Copernicus and later Galileo Galilei are however credited with Venus's classification as a planet, while Mikhail Lomonosov has been credited with initially discovering the planet's gaseous atmosphere in 1761. This claim was later verified in 1790 by astronomer Johann Schroeder. Though it has been visually observable for as long as mankind can remember, the naming of Venus is again a bit of a mystery. Venus received its most popular moniker via a selection of Roman gods and goddesses. Venus was named after the Roman goddess of love and beauty, a counterpart to Greeks Aphrodite. It wasn't always known as such. Ancient Babylonians who recognized Venus, for example, named it as the Star of Ishtar, their own goddess of fertility, love and war. The symbol for womanhood has even been adopted as the symbol of this planet of love and strong women, being the first and only one with a feminine name. Prior to being officially dubbed Venus, Greeks and Romans had unknowingly turned Venus into two different stars. To the Greeks Venus was both Phosphorus and Hesperus, and to the Romans, it was recognized as Lucifer and Vesper. Both nations didn't know that the alleged two stars they were referencing were actually one body until later when further observations were conducted and its orbit was understood. It is theorized that Venus was formed about four and a half billion years ago when gravity pulled swirling gas and dust together to form the second planet and it later settled into its current layout. Venus is the second closest planet to the Sun, at a distance of 108.2 million kilometers, or 67.24 million miles, or 0.7 AU, receiving the Sun's light in six minutes. Venus has a radius of 6,051 kilometers, or 3,760 miles, and a diameter of 12,104 kilometers, or 7,521 miles, slightly smaller than Earth. It has a mass of 4.87 times 10 to the 24th kilograms, or 85% that of Earth. The mentioned similarities also give way to similar densities, Venus having a density of 5.24 grams per cubic centimeter, while Earth has 5.52. It also has as much volume as Earth, 928.45 billion cubic kilometers, compared to Earth's 1,083.21 billion. Its closest approach to Earth happens once every 584 days when the planets catch up to one another. On average, it can get as close as 25 million miles or 40 million kilometers to Earth, the equivalent of about 0.28 AU. One of the reasons that ancient civilizations unknowingly turned Venus into two separate stars, the morning star and the evening star, was that they didn't understand its orbit. Venus goes from being visible only after sunset to only being visible prior to sunrise when its orbit around the sun surpasses Earth's orbit. Venus orbits the sun at an average distance of about 0.72 AU and completes an orbit every 224.7 days. Though most planetary orbits are elliptical, Venus's orbit is the closest to circular, with an eccentricity of less than 0.01. When Venus lies between Earth and the sun in inferior conjunction, it makes the closest approach to Earth of any planet at a distance of 41 million kilometers or 25 million miles. Venus spends most of its time away from Earth. This paradoxically makes Mercury the closest planet to Earth, a plurality of the time. The orbit is a bit inclined relative to Earth's orbit. When Venus passes between Earth and the Sun, it usually doesn't cross the face of the Sun. Transits of Venus occur when the planet's inferior conjunction coincides with its presence in the plane of Earth's orbit. Transits of Venus occur in cycles of 243 years, with the current pattern of transits being pairs of transits separated by 8 years, at intervals of about 105.5 years or 121.5. When plotted geocentrically from an Earth-centered perspective, there is a highly noticeable rhythm in the motion of Venus. After 8 years, it returns to the same place in the sky on the same date. This was known to many ancient civilizations such as the Maya, and it is termed the pentagram of Venus. Over eight years, each phenomenon, each relative position of Earth, Venus, and the Sun, occurs five times, and then over the next eight years, they repeat five times almost identically. Citations and credits, Guy Ottawell, Earthski. Venus has a retrograde rotation, moving in the opposite direction than most planets. Only Uranus also does this. They both move from east to west, clockwise.
Venus does this rotation once every 243 Earth days, having the slowest rotation out of all the planets in the solar system. This slow rotation also influences its shape, making Venus very spherical. One Venusian day is longer than one Venusian year, 225 Earth days. As a comparison, Venus's equator rotates at 6.52 km per hour, while Earth's rotates at 1,674.4 km per hour. It has been observed that it's even getting slower. In 16 years between the Magellan spacecraft and Venus Express visits, the rotation of Venus has slowed down up to 6.5 minutes in that time span. Theories suggest that this slow and retrograde rotation are due to the fact that Venus suffered a collision in the past, while some consider it as an equilibrium state between tidal locking to the Sun's gravitation, which tends to slow rotation, and an atmospheric tide created by solar heating of the thick Venusian atmosphere. Venus is tilted away from the plane of the ecliptic by 2.7 degrees, meaning it is almost completely upside down. Because of this, Venus almost doesn't experience any seasons, spinning nearly upright. Venus is very similar to Earth in its structure. The core it possesses is approximately 2,000 miles or 3,200 kilometers in radius. Above that core rests a mantle of hot rock, slowly churning due to the planet's interior heat. As a result, the surface is a thin crust of rock that bulges and moves as Venus's mantle shifts and creates volcanoes. Its core is at least partially liquid since both Venus and Earth started cooling at about the same rate. Due to its smaller size, it is estimated that Venus's pressure is about 24% lower in its deep interior. About 80% of the Venusian surface is covered by smooth volcanic plains, consisting of 70% plains with ridges and 10% smooth or lobate plains. Venus does contain two highland continents that make up the rest of its surface area. One is located in the planet's northern hemisphere and it is called Ishtar Terra, after Ishtar, the Babylonian goddess of love, and it is about the size of Australia. The highest mountain on Venus is named Maxwell Montes, and it is located here. Its peak is about 11 kilometers or 7 miles above the Venusian average surface elevation. The second continent is located in the southern hemisphere, south of the equator, and it is called Aphrodite Terra, after the Greek goddess of love. It is the larger of the two highlands, at a roughly size of South America. Here, there is a network of fractures and faults that covers much of the area. What is an enigma, is the absence of evidence of lava flow and calderas. With few and small impact craters, it is suggested that Venus's dense atmosphere burns up smaller meteors, and at the same time it indicates that its surface is young. As far as we know, Venus doesn't have tectonic activity like Earth. It is believed that water helps drive that, and Venus long ago lost its water because of the greenhouse effect. The surface, even though it appears young, has craters that appear equally eroded, pointing towards a catastrophic event that resurfaced the planet about half a billion years ago. All features that were older were wiped out, and big impacts over time created these new young craters. It is believed that the volcanoes on the surface of Venus repaved the planet. There are many indirect evidences that volcanic activity is ongoing to this day. Sulfur dioxide levels dropped in 1980, which may indicate that a big volcanic event happened in 1870, blasting out lots of gas which then subsided. It is theorized that without tectonics, slow bubbling leaks of lava from the interior of the planet can continue in one spot for a long time, creating what is called pancake domes.